This is the Will Clinton Church of Christ in Humble, Texas. This is May 29, 2022. This is our Sunday evening message. Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. John chapter 11, verse 1 through 15 is our text. We thank our brothers for leading us in worship, our brothers and sisters for supporting uh, the worship by being in, by participating from the heart. We want to see when saints are sick spiritually, we must call on the Lord to help just as Lazarus' sister sent a message to the Lord that the one you love is sick. He knows who it come from. He knows it's Lazarus. But if we look at this text, we're going to see some things. Let's go to John 11. And we're going to see something Jesus says here. Uh, Jesus tells them something unusual. Verse 4. When Jesus heard that he said the sickness is not to death. But he dies. So what does that mean? We don't need to guess at it. This is not Lazarus' end. Something else is going to get him. And then he'll be no more. Jesus already knows I'm going to go raise him from the dead. This is a temporary departure. But for the glory of God. That's why I said we didn't say that. Well, that's what he means because the man does die. And Jesus knows if I go heal him, he's not going to die. I need to let him die, but this is not his end. And we're not talking about the judgment. This is just not his end. Now, that's going to be a death he's going to experience that he's not going to get raised from until the day of judgment. He says the Son of God might be glorified. That's the mission. That's the motive. Jesus goes further to explain to them in verse 9. Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not. And this is the part we want for our lesson. Because he seeth the light of this world. This is a physical reference. When people walk in the daylight very rare will they stumble. I mean, I, I see what's before me. Unless I'm not looking now, then I can stumble. So if I'm looking and it's light, I should not fall. But if a man walk in the night, he's stunned because there's no light in him. I don't care how hard you look at night. The same thing you just came down. Same route. If it's dark, there are going to be shadows, hues. And you're going to miss that raised up level in a concrete trip and fall and hurt yourself. Because there's no light. How does this relate to our walk? If you are trying to follow Christ and you are not walking in the daylight, you're going to fall. He said, you're going, just like people fall physically, you're going to fall. He's telling you, you're going to fall. And that fall will be you losing your soul. That fall will be you sinning. And if you don't quit walking in the darkness, which is sin, you're going to fall. Or if you walk in information, which we go to doctrine. Remember, there's two parts to the mark of the man. One is doctrinal life to his moral life. That's the idea. So doctrinally, if you walk in the dark on understanding scriptures, you're going to fall doctrinally. So you're going to say something that God is not going to be pleased with. And then at the judgment, he judges us in a negative way. So we understand those snippets from the understanding of the scriptures. Let's look at verse 14. This is how we know Jesus knows. Okay, I could have saved him. Jesus can't stop people from dying when it's time for them to die, fine. So he's saying, you know, he's going to explain why he says it's not in the death. I didn't make up the answer. Verse 14. They said Jesus and them, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent you may believe. Nevertheless, let's go on to him. So he said, I'm glad. Well, if I was there, I would have healed him. I don't get glorified. As the one who is the resurrection. That's going to be the whole motive for this. I am the resurrection. He's going to tell one of the sisters. I am the resurrection. I cause men. To live again. Let's read further down. Verse. 
21. Then said Martha to Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. That's why I said, man, I'm glad I wasn't there. So I delayed my coming. But I know that even now what self thou will ask of God, God will give it thee. Okay, that's confidence, faith. So she's saying even now, she's saying, I already know. And listen to what she's pointing out. There's nothing left but to raise from the dead. I already know if you ask that, he would do it. That's what she's talking about. Now watch him challenge that belief that's in her heart. He's going to challenge it. Jesus said to her, thy brother shall rise again. She thinks he's talking about the resurrection. About to say to them, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. That's when the law will come. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection. What does that mean? He's actually dead now. This should be unto death. Because if I didn't come and heal him, he's gone. He's never coming back. But it's not because my father's going to let me raise up to show I am the resurrection. I don't have to wait till that day to prove that. But Lazarus is going to die again, and he's got to wait to that day to rise again. So he says, not only am I the resurrection, I am the life. He's not just saying that just not, you know, that I raise people up. I give you life. Why is that important? On earth. You need to have life in you while you're on earth to be alive, as Lazarus was before he died. He had the teachings of life in him. Verse 26, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She said to them, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And we had so said, she went away and called Mary, her sister, secretly, saying, The Master is come and call it for thee. So then she heard that she arose quickly and came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet coming to the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. The Jews then, which were with her in the house, and comforted her when they saw Mary. And she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth into the grave to weep there. And Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him. She fell down at his feet, saying, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother and not die. See, now. Nah. The other sisters thinking resurrection is possible, but we, you know, we know if you ask, we know you're unlimited. But nobody's asking him, can you raise him from the dead? See, to have something in your heart and then not ask, if Jesus doesn't do this, it's not going to be done. She, she should ask, raise him from the dead, master. But she has confidence, well, on the day he's going to raise, we can wait, it's okay. But Jesus said, no, nah, I, I got a lesson to teach. I got to show you who I am now. So you'll keep your faith when you die. And I will raise you up because I'll raise your brother. Your brother's dead as dead can be. And so when Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping, which came out, he groaned in his spirit with trouble because sorrow. He knows this is how it feels when people die. I know how they feel. I made them. It's bothering me. And he said, where have you laid? And they said, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, behold how he loved them. And some of them said, could not this man which opened, remember this part, the eyes of the blind have caused even this man that he should not have died? Everything's about healing. Still not resurrected. Now you see why the Lord got to show. You know, yeah, y'all believe I'm healed, but y'all don't really believe that if I ask my father right now, I can raise the dead. So you got to understand all the stories of the dead raising have to travel, go from place to place, and then people would expect these things. Now he has to explain the story. And some of them said, could not this man have done this? They're right. But he also can raise the dead. We don't, we realize when people start to sin him, God can forgive them. But sometimes it's hard for us to believe when they haven't got baptized yet that God can bring them from the worst of circumstances to truth and save them well, through baptism and they'll be faithful. We also have trouble believing when a person 
leaves the doctrine or leaves the church morally or leaves the church physically, that man, that's a lot he did. There's a whole lot he got to get right. That's how we think. Because we're still struggling with resurrection. Because he's dead now. He's definitely dead now. And you're right. It is awesome to see people come back. Because they are dead. But they're dead spiritually. And that's why this point is a hard sell. Nevertheless, Jesus is going to test their faith. Jesus therefore grown. Verse 39. She said, take away the stone. Now look what Martha, Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said, Lord, now this time he's stinking. He's been dead for days. Well, see, here's a problem. He rolled that stone back. It's going to stink. When you roll back and uncover the sins of men, their heart, the darkness, the secrets of it, it stinks. It's like that wind comes out. Rotten flesh. Blood curdling. Decomposing worms eating and feasting and dropping their eggs more worms will keep coming out and more worms is on in the life but the law said yeah I know it's going to stink he stinks because he's dead saints stink when they're dead spiritually doctrinally or morally they stink just like this on, on a spiritual level Jesus said unto said not I unto thee that if thou wouldest believe Thou should have seen the glory of God. I oh, know he stinks. But the glory of God requires that he stinks. And his puffy body that's swelling now, he stinks. We got to smell it. We got to smell the nasty sins of false teachers and immoral saints. False teachers in the world and immoral world. We got to smell it in order to raise up. Now it's raised up when they hear the gospel. And they're baptized. But a saint, which loud as he is, no. If this was a saint, he's dead. So we can't baptize him no more. So this is a different resurrection. They took away the stone from the place where the dead was. Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast hurt me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when Jesus had spoken, he cried a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth. So the saint comes back to life. Bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, loose him and let him go. Then many other Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. Because they know, nah, man, this dude was dead. We wrapped him up, threw him, put the napkin on, just like they're going to do Jesus. He was gone. This guy's for real, man. This guy's for real. Yet, why are the faithful when they say, he's a deceiver, give us Barabbas? You can sway any man's mind. At least two of his own disciples of the 11 are looking up when he goes on a car and doubt. Man, I'm, not, I'm not sure if that's really him. I know they know about the resurrection of Lazarus. So, just because you believe then, don't believe you're going to keep believing. I already remember that saying, hold fast. So, as we bind men with their sins and lock it with the keys of truth, the saint can come forth as Lazarus. They can do like the Lord did me. I thought I left my family. Ozan, come forth. Loose him. I left my family. And was a member of the church. Over two years. I say that to the glory of the Lord. But you got to let the Lord loose. You can't loose yourself now. You can't loose yourself. See, because when you sin, the sin's got to be unloosed. And only the Lord gives the decree. Go unshackle him. Who told them to unloose him? Jesus. Loose him. I'm going to let y'all listen. He can go free. Now, let's get some more scriptures, some more information. The medicine the Lord gives to heal a soul that is spiritually sick or dead is the scriptures. Not encouragement, 
Not songs that get you pumped up. Psalms, hymns and spiritual songs. But not no rock and roll song with the Lord name in it. The Bible, the scriptures instructions. They sometimes include rebuke. They sometimes include encouragement. They sometimes include step to take. Jesus was able to heal the blind and still is able to do so. However, if the blind won't take the instructions, they will remain blind to the grave, then to the fires of hell. So we saw the man said, we know this guy can make the blind see. Look at Matthew 15 and 8. Matthew 15 and 8. Here's some blind men that do not want to see. What if Lazarus had said when they took the thing, put the napkin back on my face. Put the napkin back on my face and wrap me up again. He lost his mind. This is what your brethren do. This is what the world does when its eyes is open. Matthew 15 and 8. There's people drawing nigh to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. That's why the problem. The heart got to come near to Jesus. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. This particular group is saints, so saints will teach for doctrine the commandments of men. Who will be the men? They themselves are some outside group. And he called them up to and said unto them, hear and understand. Not that which goes into the mouth defileth man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. Then came the disciples and said unto them, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended as they heard the saying? Because they've been teaching, you know, that uh, if you even don't wash hands, it's a sin. So Jesus said, No. Nah. So that, that offends them. It causes them to stumble. It causes them to trip because their doctrine has a break in it. And now people looking at them, Well, you know, he said that's not what we should worry about. But he has to said, every plant which my heavenly father has not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind and these are blind. But wait a minute, I thought he could open the eyes of the blind if you want to see. And if the blind lead, the blind both shall fall into the ditch. So, yeah, the Lord can open the eyes of the blind if you want to see. If you cover your eyes, the Lord said they have covered their eyes so they can see not. So these have covered the eyes. The Lord cannot help them. Paul talked about saints sick at Corinth. Look at 1 Corinthians 11, 26. This is spiritual sickness. It has nothing to do with no physical sickness. Taking the Lord's Supper the right way will not cure you of a physical sickness. The Lord's meal itself is spiritual. 1 Corinthians 11 and verse number 26. Bible says for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you do show the Lord's death till he come wherefore whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthy shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup for he that eat and drink it unworthily eat it and drink it down to himself not discerning the Lord's body for this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, and we shall not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tear one for another. If any man hunger, let him eat at home. And you come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. So that's out of order. So take the Lord's Supper without examining yourself. But you examine you. I don't examine you. You don't examine me. You examine yourself. This is for the world too. I so say we can't examine ourselves. He's blind. Amen. Then get baptized and let the Lord give you sight. That's the whole purpose of the gospel. So we understand that. So some saints are dead. He said many sleep. Sick. We and some are dead, dead spiritually. So we have to tell the Lord, hey, they're dead. But to pray for them, that God will heal them. We may have to rebuke, give an instruction. 
we may have to encourage. And then if the Lord shall say, so 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 and so, come forth, loose her. Brother so and so, come forth, loose him. He's dead, he stinks, he stinks. Let's look at another one. Some saints have a disease in their feet and they cannot walk straight. Look at John 13, the gospel, verse 6. John 13, 6. Then cometh he to Simon Peter. Now Jesus is about to wash their feet. They began to think on thoughts. They should not. They've been discussing prior to who's going to be in control when he goes. Jesus rises. I want to eat this good meal, but y'all just can't walk. Some, somebody walking the wrong way. Somebody stepping on toes unrighteously. So he gets to Simon Peter. And Peter said, Lord, see now Peter got the right mentality because he's looking at it physically. Lord, does thou wash my feet? Jesus asked, said, I tell him, what I do, thou knowest not now, but thou shalt not have to. Peter said, thou shalt never wash my feet. It's this struggle. No, he said, oh, man, no. It's the lowest job in the community. No, man, you're not washing. I should be doing that. No, you can't wash my feet, Lord. That's never happen. This is too low. He doesn't understand. He's right physically, but not right spiritually. Jesus asked, if I wash thee not, thou hast no part in me. So Peter said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and head. See, Peter has the right mentality. He's like a lot of us. Sometimes he may say the wrong thing. The mentality, right? Oh, okay, I'm gonna have no part. Then wash everything, Lord. Feet, hands, everything. So he's gone to the other extreme because he said, okay, I got a spirit. If I have a part with you, wash all of me, cleanse me. So what does Jesus say in him? He that is washed needed not save to wash his feet. But it's clean every whit. And you are clean, but not all. So it says, okay, if I've already washed you and you gotten dirty because y'all walk is getting shaky, let me just clean the feet. I need to clean. So the metaphor is being shown physically, but he's correcting them spiritually. And then now they come to a portion where they understand, okay, y'all clean, huh? But it's one of y'all that's not. And that's Judas. So after he had washed their feet, had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, Know you what I've done unto you? He said once more, Do you know what I've done? Or to you, you call me master and lord, and you say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your lord and master, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. But I've given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither is he that is sent greater than he that is sent. If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me had lifted up his heel against me. I tell you before it come, when it come to pass, you may believe that I am he. He's not know I know it's Judas. I chose him. But one of you is a devil, he told him. In John 6, one of you is a devil. But I still chose you. I know you're going to be a devil, but I chose you. Many are called, but few are chosen. Remember, because you're chosen doesn't mean you're going to make it. Because you can always leave. Chosen or not permanent. He says that. He says, I chose you, but one of you is a devil. Well, if I chose him, isn't it impossible for him to die lost? No, it is not. Who said that lie? Not Jesus. So look at the levels. Many are called. Some people get cut after the call because they won't be chosen. And then some are chosen, but they can't maintain because they become an enemy to the cross. Paul talked about it. But we have to understand that, brother. That's why I said Paul to understand the law will say who's going to get to heaven and who's not. That's not our job. It's just it's to, who would think Judas would make it? Is he not chosen? Well, that's cut too. He didn't make the third cut. Sometimes teams do that. 
First, second, cut. He think he's going to be playing. I think we're going to move in down and they cut him to last. Mm -hmm. He goes back to the job he had before. Good job. This can't play the sport professionally. He got cut. Judas gets the last cut. And he said, hey, we need to understand that. It's not my writing. I'm just reading it. And that's what I'm going to do till I die. Just read it. I don't want to write it. It's already been written. Colossians 1 and verse 9. Colossians 1 and 9. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. And to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. See, it's got to be all. Not just a few things. It's not like a car. A, a six cylinder car can run on five, but you can't run on five and go to heaven. You got to hit all six. We need to understand that. He says, all pleasing. Being fruitful in most good works. Every good work. And increasing in the knowledge of God. Continuing to increase. Remember Henry said in one of his teachings, he said, we can't just stay on the same scriptures, brethren. We got to go up. We got to move forward. We got to grow. So this is right in what the Lord told him to teach. Increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious gospel. Unto all patience and long suffering with joy. And there's a whole lot of stuff here to cover. Giving thanks to the Father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Who have delivered us from the power of darkness. And have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. The world can never save itself. It has to come to Christ. Because the power of darkness has it. It's not against the world's will. It is the spirit that is weak. But the flesh is weak. So if the person's soul does not communicate and work with the spirit where possession is made and then it comes forward and accepts by desire I want this word so I can be released from this power of darkness it never gets saved it doesn't matter who preaches it doesn't matter what that one never gets baptized Colossians 4 and 5 Walk in wisdom toward them that are without redeeming the time. So why would I care what the world sees about me? Those that were out. They can't judge me. First Corinthians 2. Don't take that out of context. No. Nah. The world can't judge you and the things you're saying are not accurate because when you read from the text, you, you, you have the mind of Christ. And your mind of Christ tells you to read the text and not talk about it. But if you walk without or with them without in an incorrect way, God said that about David. He said, you call other people to blaspheme me, taking this man and woman and killing him. You call other people to blaspheme me, I'm about to take your son from you. And he knew that was something David did not want. He knew David cannot take this hit. So he knows. He knows that it's gonna get this gonna get you. It's gonna teach you. And then it's gonna let the world know. Yeah, he don't play favorites. If you step out of line, he's gonna get you, no matter what you've done. It's gonna be hard to do a whole lot of doing on David. So if he didn't spare David, he's not gonna spare us. Second Thessalonians 3. Verse 11. For we hear. That there are some which walk, that is again, dirty feet among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busy bodies. So to not have a job is to be disorderly, male or female. So I said, what about, so should a woman have a job and be a homemaker? What job did Jesus give her? In the house, Paul said. I would. They maintain that. Well, that's her job. She want to get another job? That's fine. Say, but she don't get no check. Getting a check don't make no job. What check do you get to come to church? You get a check? What check do we get? If you do a righteous act, do you hear something go cha-ching? 
in your pocket and change rolling in there and dollars, your wallet purse swells up. No, so work is work. The job job, the Lord will supply. So the homemaker, if she stays at work from the time she says I do to the grave, that's her job. Just do it well. The woman that has a job outside and in, like the proverb woman, beautiful. So the idea is that nobody cannot work. It's not going to happen. Not in the kingdom. Everybody, and this is talking about labor. It's not talking about anything to do with in the church. Labor. Somebody said, what about a full-time preacher? That is his job. That's why he gets a check. Full-time. He take care of all his needs. He don't need to work. Okay. Part-time preacher. Got to die. He like the woman in the house. No one's better than the other. Just work. Just work in the kingdom. But the person getting sustenance, as Paul taught 1 Corinthians 9, that would be his job. So when I say preachers that aren't able to have the funds they need, don't teach time, go get a job. I'm not in a position to demand them to get a job. I'm saying if you want more, you can go get a job. If not, be quiet and preach. Don't complain because the, the authority is not given to you. Those are your calls, you know. You can reduce your income so low, you could basically live out of somebody's garage and preach for free. I mean, without a dime. I mean, it depends on what you want to do, what your family gonna go through with you. So the idea, that's why we, we can't make a preacher get a job. You know what I mean? It's like, I can't even get a job like me. I can't do that. I have any thought. When I say that, I'm saying, oh, don't complain no more. And don't teach it the tithe. And I'm telling you, that tithe will bring the money in. I'm telling you now. Amen. They know it. They know y'all think they're preaching because they don't want to, man. They know what they're doing. But at the end, it's judgment. And it won't be good. Hebrews 12 and 11. Hebrews 12 and 11. Now, no chastening for the present, seeming to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, the yield of the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Some people out there, good spanking from the Lord, they decide. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to be a saint anymore. I'm tired of getting beat up by Christians. I came to church to be loved. Well, you are loved. So you're saying God don't love you when he spanks He says, I love you like a father who spanks the children he loves. Verse number 12. Wherefore, well, lift up the hands and chain down the feet beneath. Sometimes the hands get tied in the knees. I don't want like a kid. I don't want to play anymore. I don't want any chocolate. He runs and he cries. I don't want to go to church. I don't want to read scripture. You know, I don't want to do nothing. You know, I lost my job. I don't want to do his knees. He's feeble, so he needs medicine. So he says, lift him up. Me you know the Lord whooped you. He took your job. Were you righteous? Well, I kept saying, I, you know, I really want to come to church, but I hadn't been to church in about a year because I work on Sundays. We don't know if that's why he took it, but we know one thing, you don't have it no more. Now you can come to church. Isn't that amazing? Now, if he shows up at church, don't come with hands hanging down, sick hands and weak knees. Don't come like that. Verse 13, make straight path for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. So he let it be healed. Feet that are twisted when children are born, knees that are out of joint, cause crisscross walking. So he says, let it be healed. This walk can be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the law. So you have to follow peace. Now a peaceful person, you get angry easy, you won't see the law. You have to have peace with men. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you. And that be, thereby many be defiled. Many will be defiled. Lest there be any fornicate or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. And this is a hard sell because Esau through stupidity and ignorance, didn't realize birthright, or he thought he could finagle his way out of it because it was a guarantee. I came out first, it's obvious, I'll just tell him this. 
He's not going to get it anyway. Ain't nothing to it. Don't birthright without the stuff. But the law was saying the term of birthright is something I give. I'll let you come out first. Because your brother had your, your ankle. He had your leg, your foot, part of you. He could have yanked you back in. I'll let you get out first. So you didn't appreciate that. So now you get nothing. You don't get the stuff either. By the time he came, it was all Jacob's. He didn't do nothing but cook that deal meat for nothing. He, he can wait. He'd kill a deal for nothing. Dad already had dinner. Blessing being given. You lose. And that's what will happen to us. So he says, For you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. See, when he comes for the inheritance, he's rejected because God heard the conversation. What is this birthright to me? I'm starving. Oh, really? So you, so you think it's more better for you to eat than accept an everlasting amount of all the stuff? See, that's what happens when saints are sick. Come forth, sister. You know what happens? See, you want to have sex right now because you just can't wait for everlasting pleasures in heaven. There won't be no sex there. But you can't wait because you might say, what could be that better than this? But well, that's why you get your piece of meat. When the birthright comes, you die lost. Because you died thinking that was okay. You never repent. You never say I was wrong for this sin. So I said, okay. When the blessing comes, you're not getting it. That's what Esau found out. Bring you a nice meal. His dad would say, who are you? <laughs> the funniest line I ever read. One of the funniest lines by. Who? How could you be Esau? I just bless. Oh, that was Jacob. Mm. Oh, well, a lot of fix it. <laughs> but he never gave it back to him. He didn't fix nothing. He fixed it and he gave Esau some stuff, but you're going to serve your brother. Your children are going to serve to the end. And when Edom tried to break free from Israel, God let a nation come in and wipe them out, busting them down to just a few. Because he said, no, I told you, don't get no king. I told See, the other people was told don't get no king. I just Edom was told don't get no king. Don't you get no king. You're going to serve Israel. They would. Let them get whooped. Edom got whooped so bad. They all thought they were safe in the mountains. Got whooped in the mountain. Nevertheless, Lord, behold whom thou lovest. See, we should pray for our brethren. If you can say something to them, do it. If you can tell someone else who can say something to them, do it. Try to reach them. They may not respect you. That's fine. Tell the other saint. Let them go before you. Somebody say, well, why don't you tell him? Well, you close to him. I think he'll hear you. I really think. He'll listen to you too, but no, I think he'll hear you. Does he like you? You're pretty close. Well, then let's see. That's the information. You believe it. Well, you tell him. And let's see who he likes. Jesus or himself. Tell him. That's all you got to do. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Do you want to resurrect? Here it comes. 1 Corinthians 15. One more over, brother. I declare to you. The gospel which I preach unto you, which also you have received and where you stand. Man, this is so profound. By which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I deliver unto you first of all that which I also receive, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. And he was buried and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Look at the list of who saw him. Finally, verse 8. Last of all seen of me as one born out of due time. I was the last one that saw Jesus and the last one that will ever see Jesus Christ. Ever. Until we all see him together. Mark chapter number 16 and verse 15. Go your entire world and preach the gospel to every creature. Jesus told him. He that believe in his baptized shall be saved, but he that believe it not shall be damned. Acts 2 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made that same Jesus him crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, you know, this guy is saying this. See, this is where the test comes to the spoken and written word. This is the same dude that's going to get in trouble by dietary laws. He's wrong on that. How do we know he's not wrong? None. How? You don't have to have scripture. Jesus said it will begin in Jerusalem. Then Judea, Samaria, and the other most parts of the world. 
He's preaching it. The spot's right. Anybody can see Peter. The laws are nailed to the cross. You don't want to struggle. That's why you keep having these visions. God talking to you in these trances. You don't only want that struggling with it's okay to eat pork and it's okay to hang around non-Jews. You're the only one. You and a few others like you. But he's on point now. But why should we believe him when he was wrong then? Why? I mean, what's the deal? He got up and then he wouldn't eat with Gentiles because he was tested by James. Paul has rebuked him. Should we trust this guy? That's twice what's with him. He's a man. And when you speak where God didn't speak, you in trouble. When you speak where God spoke, you okay. That's how it is. That's the system and we love it. It says, now when they heard this, they were picked in their hearts, said to Peter, to rest their pots, man and brother, what shall we do? Then said Peter unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the mission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exalt, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly receive his word were baptized in the same day. There will add to them about 3,000 souls. And they continue steadfast in the apostle doctrine and the fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer. And finally, Acts 2.47, praising God in every favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved Acts chapter 8 it doesn't matter your status amount of money in your pocket when you hear the gospel the message is the same verse 35 then Philip opened his mouth began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus and as they went on their way they came into a certain water and a eunuch said see here is water what the hinder me to be baptized and Philip said if thou believest in all thy heart thou mayest and he answered and said I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God and he commanded the chariot to stand still they went down both into the water both Philip and a eunuch and he baptized him now the rejoicing begins his soul is safe well this work for me and all men and is this the point of salvation 1 Peter 3 21 the like figure why unto even baptism is also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, someone will say, what about the thief on the cross? Well, you know, they're 100% right, to be honest. We come back and say, well, Jesus hadn't died, been buried, or resurrected. So, you know, yeah, but this is the text that says you got to be baptized. This is the text. Once this is read, that's nothing else to discuss. You will find nobody being saved at the Pentecost without this text that he is the gospel. See, got to be baptized. Acts 19, 1 through 5 shows it must be a male member of the church of Christ and he must tell the message correctly. And then you're saying, because if you just hear something about Jesus and it can be from a male and the message isn't correct, you still not saved. Acts 19, 1 through 5. So he's clear. He's gone into heaven on the right hand of God. Angels, authorities, and powers being made subject unto him. It's very challenging for Jesus to have the final word. It challenges us. It challenges. So what he say go, yeah. So he meet all these people, so yeah. So now we but Moses. No, he saved Moses. I don't know. We know you don't. That's why we're trying to teach. That's what we say to the world to help them. And sometimes we have to tell saints that. Revelation 2 10, for not all things without shall suffer. Be all the devil shall cast some of you into prison. That you may be tried, you shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. This is the hope of salvation. We believe this. You can be baptized not. You need prayer to stay standing when we sit down. Brother Freeze has set up a unique program on YouTube where you touch a little V-shaped object under the title. It will open up a whole list of numbers to call. Whereby we can tell you where to go to be saved. We can give you counsel. We can study with you online. Way across the ocean. You can be in Antarctica. And we can be talking to you. If the signal will get there. Don't worry about how you can get baptized. Just want to. And the Lord will take out all the rest. We know it's cold. But the Lord knows what he's doing too. Like he found water in the desert and acts hey. He'll find water for you that won't kill you when you get baptized. If you believe that, you have that desire in your heart and call the number 
Or you can stand up. Together we sing and sing. Heaven's invitation. Softly and tenderly.